Hello, and welcome to this video on Luke Skywalker, Hero of the Rebels, and Destroyer of Yavin 4. Skywalker is the saver of Yavin 4, according to the depiction in the movie. As he fired the shot which created the chain reaction in the Death Star, this led to the eventual destruction of this weapon. Luke, trust me. and the saving of the planet. Ignoring the incredibly questionable shot, which destroyed the Death Star for now, let's look what actually happened immediately afterwards. As the Death Star had been destroyed, the Rebel base on Yavin was being evacuated, ostensibly to avoid Imperial reprisals, but this is unlikely to have worked or to have been a concern. The first reason is the falling and floating debris. The space around the planet would be filled with large amounts of space debris from the Death Star. This would lead to damage to any spacecraft going into orbit or attempting to escape the planet's gravity well. Before these craft could even attempt to reach space though, there is a more important problem. This is the first reason. Falling and floating debris that would come down and hit the surface of the planet. A 10 km asteroid destroyed all life on Earth and made a 160 km crater. Debris from this explosion was thrown into the atmosphere and altered the climate leading to the extinction of three quarters of the species that existed at that time. And asteroids hit Earth typically at speeds of 16 to 32 km a second. The Death Star would drop many asteroids of smaller size than this on Yavin 4, but in significantly greater numbers. Further to that, the Death Star sends chunks of Alderaan flying into space at over 10,000 km per second. This requires a ridiculous amount of energy, the same energy that would be released when the Death Star is destroyed. Rebel base in range. You may fire when ready. Command its primary ignition. It would be reasonable to assume that the amount of energy imparted to parts of the Death Star when it is destroyed would be less, but still considerably greater than that at which a regular asteroid would hit the Earth, and as a result, asteroids, or in this case, parts of the Death Star hitting Yavin 4, would do so at a far greater speed than that which destroyed most of the life on Earth. So let's begin by looking at this problem. What production information for the Death Star that is available follows? It has a diameter of between 160 and 900 kilometers. This is due to poor universe consistency and information quality. This is divided into sectors with massive steel girders. The entire outer hull was plated in steel. Both class 4 and class 20 hyperdrives were installed. Hypermatter reactors and power cells were present. There were backup power reserves for emergency life support. There were over a million kilotons of cargo and three years worth of supplies for the crew. And it had a large complement of TIE fighters. The outer crust was several kilometers thick and comprised the habitable layers of the Death Star. The inner reactor had a massive radiation-proofed core. This involved a substantial radiation barrier made of specialized steel with an incredible density. And this combination of materials creates a varying size and density of debris-based asteroids that would be hitting Yavin 4, and most likely many planets within the same system in the very near future. And these are simply the physical threats from Skywalker's heroism, but what about the energy released? The reactors create 2 trillion 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 joules, or 2.2 by 10 to the 36th power of energy. This is an underestimation. It is probable that the Death Star must fire the primary weapon at 3 by 10 to the 36th joules of power. And again, this is an underestimation, as the defensive weapons platforms on the Death Star continue to fire whilst the primary weapon is in use, during at least one major battle scene. This places further strain on the reactors, therefore the system would require even more energy than that calculated for the simple destruction of a planet. 
A sun puts out 3.85 by 10 to the 26th power watts of energy in a second. In other words, the Death Star uses 250 years of sun energy each time it fires the primary weapon to destroy a planet. This Death Star sends chunks of Eldoran flying into space. That is over 10,000 kilometers per second. This requires a ridiculous amount of energy. All this energy is released when the space station is destroyed. In order to boil the Earth's ocean, 3.6 by 10 to the 24th power joules is required. In other words, there is more than a 0.6 by 10 to the 12th power difference, more than is needed for the Earth to boil. The oven 4 is slightly smaller than the Earth, but the slightly greater surface water area due to the swamplands and oceans. This means the oven 4 is likely to experience drastic increases in heat based on the amount of energy released and the amount of water transformed into vapour. This would also result in a significant increase in pressure across the entire planet. This would have the effect of increasing barometric pressure for the lungs and preventing air from being expelled, thereby suffocating all of the rebel leadership in very short order. In a similar vein, the amount of water vapour in the air would likely cause suffocation as it would decrease the amount of oxygen available. Luke Skywalker, the Jedi and hero of the proletariat, is actually a monster just as guilty of atrocities as the Empire, having killed more than 1.18 million crew of the Death Star and everyone on the planet below. However, this is not consistent with the canon, although, as noted at the beginning, the universe is not particularly consistent within itself or its application of physics. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you may have below.